Welcome to the RMCC Compliance Update for May 2022 in the Midwest region. In Illinois, the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation, IDFPR, announced the Circuit Court of Cook County has lifted the stays that that enjoined a 185 conditional adult use cannabis dispensing organization license, licenses to applicants selected in three lotteries in 2021. In anticipation for receiving further guidance in a related federal case, IDFPR anticipates releasing detailed information on next steps for applicants as soon as the guidance is issued. The federal case concerns objections to the state's residency requirements for dispensary owners. Today, Quote, today is a key development towards our ultimate goal of creating the most diverse, inclusive, and robust adult use cannabis industry of any state in the country, said Mario Trito Jr., Secretary of the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation. Quote, we stand ready to swiftly move forward to ensuring Illinois standing as a national leader in the advancement of cannabis equity, end quote. To ensure fairness for all applicants and correct any errors in the lottery process, IDFPR is also working on finalizing plans for three corrective lotteries to be held in June, one for each of the cannabis dispensary license lotteries held in 2021. Details on these lotteries will be announced by the department when finalized. These updates will be available on IDFPR's Adult Use Cannabis Program webpage. And another one in Illinois... Illinois judge orders 68 corrective dispensary lotteries. Winners will have to argue afterwards. Plaintiffs in Illinois super case will have a, an opportunity to participate in a corrective lottery for adult use dispensary licenses before they make their arguments before the Cook County Circuit Court judge on whether or not they should be entitled to a license according to rulings issued Tuesday night. 67 dispensary application teams who contended their applications were either mishandled by the state or barred from participating in the application process are before Judge Cecilia Garmrath, each with different remedies ranging from requests to participate in a supplemental license lottery to a demand to scrap the entire application process and begin anew. The applicants' complaints were consolidated into one case by the Illinois Supreme Court in an effort to streamline the many complaints filed across the state. I actually interviewed a owner or someone that was awarded a license in Illinois, but then, of course, it was retracted through this entire uh, litigation situation. And he, uh, his name is KJ. He's also a veteran, and he's also an operator in Michigan as well, and, of course, is a social equity licensee as well. He grew up in the south side of Chicago. Uh, I highly recommend that you give that podcast episode a listen. Uh, It was really great to hear KJ's story and just all of the turmoil and the things he's just been going through through this entire licensing process in Illinois. Absolute headache, but I wish him the best and hopefully he'll be successful in winning one of these licenses. Moving on over to Michigan. Uh, So the CRA is no longer requiring pre-ordering of immature plants from approved marijuana grows before transferring immature plants to a retailer. Retailers are no longer required to keep proof that immature plants on site were pre-ordered. They are only required to keep a plan for maintenance and destruction of plants during the seven-day period during which they are in the inventory at the retailer. So this is just that quick uh, email from CRA over in Michigan. And then here's just a more in-depth advisory bulletin breaking down all of the different rules, what we're looking at, uh, the approval process that they required for retailers uh, before they received their shipment, and then the requirements for growers as well. So always love uh, Michigan's updates. I feel like they always go above and beyond. In Ohio, so this uh, update is brought to you by Procana, one of um, my technology clients. And full transparency, I do sit on the advisory board for them, so I am a bit biased. But uh, here is a breakdown on the guidance on Keefe, advertising reminders, and change of ownership submissions in new forms. Okay, so let's go through this. The Medical Marijuana Control Program, MMCP, pursuant to authority in Ohio Revised Code, Ohio Administrative Code 3796, 
is providing guidance to cultivators and processors on the extraction, use, and sale of keef. Uh, pursuant to Ohio Admin Code 3796 1-1-01 subsection A31, keef is considered a medical marijuana extract as obtaining keef requires the separation of cannabinoids from the plant material by physical chemical means. This manufacturing process creates a condensed powdered-like substance which has a higher cannabinoid content than raw plant material. Keef is not quote-unquote plant material as defined as by Ohio Admin Code 3796-1-1-01 subsection A subsection 37. Sorry, I just giggle at this because a lot of times with keef, keef um, is sometimes like the stalk and not like the trichome head. So like, yes, theoretically, it might be ho higher potency than like just flower material. But really, a lot of the time, those trichome heads are like broken and you don't get a really superior product like you do with full, full melt or solventless. So I just... I don't know. I just kind of chuckle at this because it's like, yes, theoretically it might be higher in potency, but a lot of times you're dealing with the stocks that don't even have cannabinoids in the stocks. Okay, so form of administration, Ohio Admin Code uh, 37968-21-01 outlines the approval, approved forms and methods of administration for medical marijuana products. The approved forms include solid for vaporization and plant material for vaporization. Because keef is a medical marijuana extract, the only acceptable form of administration is a solid for vaporization. Oh my goodness, Ohio, what the hell are you doing? Um, furthermore, once plant material is subject to an extraction process, the resulting marijuana extract, keef, cannot be incorporated into a product that is intended for administration as plant material for vaporization. They then go on to metric and outline that. So effective on June 20th, 2022, a bulk keef category will be available in metric for that processors must select when the medical marijuana extract is keef, uh, is a keef product. This category may only be utilized by processors since keef is a medical marijuana extract. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. But okay. <laughs> um, testing requirements. Bulk keef may be tested by as a marijuana derived ingredient pursuant to Ohio Admin Code 3796 4 1 or 4 2 04 subsection D. Keef intended for sale for to patients as a solid for vaporization must be tested as medical marijuana product, not as a plant material, and MMCP licenses must comply with all testing requirements outlined in Ohio Administrative Code 3796 for medical marijuana products. All right, then they go on to talk about, like, the... Um, labeling and dosing. Oh, my goodness. Good Ohio. Of course, as a cultivator, you can't use keef where that's where a lot of your keef is going to be generated anyways in the cultivation space. But what do I know? Alrighty, and our last update out of Ohio. Ohio awards 70 new provisional licenses, potentially doubling the state's total. Ohio could more than double its total number, number of medical dispensaries as early as next year, following the Ohio Board of Pharmacies awarding of 70 new RFA uh, Tier 2 provisional dispensary licenses in the state on Monday. The state expanded the number of available licenses to meet the demand for, of patients in the state, which McNamee says was overwhelming and far exceeded expectations. People love their weed. What were you expecting? All right, that's all the updates out of the Midwest.